1860, the Indian Penal Code, the technical rule was that abortion was criminalized and the only time it would be allowed was if it was necessary to save the woman's life. Around this time, mid 19th century, all across the empire, there's an effort to criminalize and clamp down on abortion, even if the woman survives. Okay, but in India, what I found was that that was just kind of the law on the books. It wasn't actually enforced. And there were a whole bunch of reasons. There were uh, colonial anxieties about false allegations. They were worried that people might accuse a woman of having an abortion, even if she hadn't, just to damage her reputation and the reputation of her larger family. Doctors in India worried about the damage that could happen to doctor-patient confidentiality and said, we're not going to report an abortion because they knew that if they did that, women would stop coming to them and then they wouldn't be able to potentially save their lives. Um, but the reason that I found uh, perhaps the most interesting and it's very specific to India was that there was a, a conflict, you could say, between the anti-abortion movement and priorities in the Indian Penal Code and another kind of social reform movement in late colonial India. And that was the movement for the remarriage of Hindu widows. The young Hindu widow was the quintessential figure who was associated with criminal abortion between the 1860s and 1947. Traditionally in many, especially upper caste communities, if a woman was a widow, she could even be a virgin. She, the marriage could have not even been consummated yet, uh, but still she was not permitted to remarry. Before 1856, you know, it was also simply not recognized in law, but after 1856, there's the Hindu Widows Remarriage Act, which affirmed the validity of those remarriage contracts. So there was a movement that was trying to encourage Hindu widows to remarry, uh, but there was still a lot of social stigma associated with it. So there would be young Hindu widows who, for whatever reason, um, couldn't remarry, uh, but they would have a relationship with, um, with a man and they would get pregnant and then they would turn to abortion. Colonial authorities realized that if they wanted to encourage young Hindu widows to remarry, they couldn't also then come down really hard on them with the criminal law if those women had abortions. So they kind of had to make a, make a choice. And I think the choice was in favor of the Hindu widow remarriage movement rather than a strict enforcement of this new harsh anti-abortion law.